The first strategy we're going to try is using groups. So let's just create a couple of simple objects that we can use to demonstrate this. I'm going to go back over to my rectangle tool, and if we hold down on that tool, we'll see it's actually got a few more tools available. So let's choose the oval tool. Now I'm just going to make one oval. And I'm going to make a second one. I'll just change the color for the second one so that we can see the difference between the two. I'll pick out an orange there for the fill, and we'll make a second oval. Now, let me just take this second one. I'll go back to my normal selection tool, and I'm going to select it. We can double click, and as we said before, that's going to select the fill and the stroke around it. So I've actually got two objects selected here. As we saw before, if I drag this object over top of the first object, it's going to cut it apart when I let go. So let's group it first. I'll do that by going up into Modify, and we'll choose Group. Now right off the bat, you can see that the selection looks a little bit different than before. We've got a blue outline around the edge. That's a great visual cue that you've got something other than a normal shape. It also shows in the Property window that I have a group. If I select the green fill, you can see that that does say Shape. Now if we go back to our orange object, I'm going to click it and drag it over top the green one. I'll drop it there, and I'll even deselect it. And when we go back and select this object, you can see that no cutting appeared. So once we group an object, it's not going to interact from that point on with any other object on the stage, even if they're in the same layer. Now we do need to know how to handle groups, because I can grab a hold of this object and reshape it just like any other object we've worked with so far, but I can't seem to do that with the group. I also can't make simple changes like colors for the outlines and the fills. In order to edit the group, you're going to need to go back to the group and double click it. Once we're inside the group, the object becomes selected just like it was before, and we can even see that it shows that it's a shape. So really what we've done is we've just contained the shape inside of that group. Now you can also tell when you're working inside the group because all the other objects outside the group are going to appear dimmed, and up here on the status line, it's going to show that we're actually working on the group instead of scene one like we were before. Inside the group, you can make any changes you want. I'm just going to click away to deselect this object, and you can see that I can actually reshape the vector. Or I could click on the stroke and change the color. And even the stroke size. Once you are done making your edits to the group, you can go back to the normal scene by just choosing Scene 1, or you can press this little blue back arrow. Either one will take you back to your normal movie, and we can see that this is acting like a group again, and our other object is selectable just like it was before. Groups are fairly handy, and if you import a lot of your artwork from Illustrator, you'll find that most items from Illustrator come in as groups, so you'll need to deal with those that way.